The fate of an entire city in North Idaho is up in the air tonight as it remains unclear whether Dalton Gardens will have a single working employee tomorrow. The school year hasn't even ended yet, but the Spokane Public School Board is meeting to talk about next school year and what reopening will look like. We take you through the topics that will be discussed ahead of tonight's meeting. A beautiful day today. We're tracking changes for tomorrow. Looking for some stormy weather Thursday night. That and a beautiful weekend forecast coming up. Taking off the mask, we'll explain the latest on the recent announcement from WSU and U of I that students need to know. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hello everyone, I'm Regina On. The fate of an entire city in North Idaho is up in the air tonight as it remains unclear whether Dalton Gardens will have a single working employee tomorrow. Animosity between city council members and the mayor have created an environment so dysfunctional Longtime staffers have started to resign. Graham 2 political reporter Casey Decker live in Dalton Gardens tonight to sort out exactly what is going on. Casey? Well, guys, I think my experience reporting today gives you a window into just how toxic this whole situation has become. I reached out to the mayor, to every member of the city council, to every current city employee, and to several Dalton Gardens residents. Almost nobody wanted to talk about this controversy. It's ballooned so out of control, no one wants to touch it. So exactly what on earth is going on here? To learn, we talked with a staff writer for the Coeur d'Alene Press who's been covering this story from the beginning. This has been boiling over for well over a year. The two main camps opposing one another, the mayor of Dalton Gardens and three of the four city council members. But there's been bickering between everyone involved for some time. Calamitous. It is, it's been a tire fire. There's no other way to describe it. And the divide isn't purely political or even easy to describe. Reporter Craig Northrup says the arguments have gotten personal and ubiquitous. Personality conflict that can best be described as death by a thousand cuts. Who can get away with the most pot shots at one another? That's really what it is. There's been debate on everything from a hot button issue on whether trained archers should be allowed to hunt deer within city limits to typically standard city policies like a hazard mitigation plan. That should be something that should have been resolved months ago. Issues that most city governments would consider pedestrian. The dysfunction took a toll on city staff. Over the last few months, retirements and resignations have trickled in. The city planner, engineer, clerk, all gone. Almost all of them said they weren't paid enough to justify the wear and tear that the acrimony within, uh, you know, within City Hall was, uh, was leading them. It left only one employee basically running the whole city. The deputy clerk became responsible for running meetings, helping citizens with permits and other requests, paying the bills, literally keeping the lights on in City Hall. Then she too announced she was resigning effective tonight. That would leave Dalton Gardens without a single employee, meaning the functions of the city would effectively shut down tomorrow. In a last ditch effort to prevent that, the council considered offering her a promotion to city clerk. That effort became a symbol of all the chaos leading up to it. This issue was so hotly debated that nearly 300 people came to the city council meeting on Monday. For context, that's about 10% of the city's whole population. 10% of Spokane would fill up Joe Alvey Stadium. Here in Dalton, it filled up this room, plus a garage across the street. Many called for the resignations of council members, others for the mayor. None of that happened. So now some citizens are actually talking about a recall effort. Recall is really a last resort, and it's ironic that these three were have come into office during a recall on a stance of less government, and they're actually overreaching their government privileges. Um, and we're hoping that they each, are, you know, the best case scenario would be if they change their tune and leave their politics at the door and maintain their positions as working for the public, as civil servants, and do the right thing rather than blocking everything they don't agree with, because that doesn't represent any community. Now, Monday night, one of the council members left the meeting early, citing illness. And because of that, there weren't actually enough members to legally vote on that job offer. 
we were able to finally get a hold of Mayor Dan Edwards just a little while ago. He told me he's planning an emergency meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock where he expects the promotion will be approved 3 to 1 and that the deputy clerk will accept the offer. If that does happen, the city will be able to at least keep the doors open, but it certainly won't be the end of their problems. And given all the chaos we've seen so far in this city, nothing is ever certain. Reporting live in Dalton Gardens, Idaho tonight, Casey Decker, Crime 2 News. Thank you, Casey. Well, the Spokane Public School Board set to talk about reopening plans during its board meeting tonight. They'll also be discussing possible student vaccinations. This comes just weeks before local high school seniors set to graduate in person after months of online learning. Our Ian Smay joining us live from the newsroom tonight with more on the meeting and how graduations will be handled by Spokane Public High Schools. Ian? Good evening, guys. As you said, the SPS School Board will be giving updates on school reopenings tonight. One of the items that leaders are supposed to be providing an update on is student and staff vaccinations. This comes just weeks after the Washington Department of Health released guidelines for schools for the upcoming year. The Department of Health said in those recommendations that it will not be setting a COVID-19 vaccine requirement for students or staff. Another item that the SPS board is set to provide an update on is graduations. According to the district, 10 of the 12 high schools having graduations will be doing so in person. Each graduate will receive two general seating wristbands to provide to guests. There will be vaccinated sections at these graduations and students can trade in their two general admission wristbands for four vaccinated section wristbands. People must provide proof of vaccination for that section, but for the students, they're just excited to complete this chapter of their life in front of their loved ones. I'm very excited to be graduating like among my peers and in front of my family just because like having so much taken away like during the year, it's super exciting to like all come together like now at the end and get to spend this like monumental time together. Now let's take a look at some of those graduation dates and times. Shadle Park will send off its seniors at 1.30 p.m. on June 12th. Later that day at 4.30 p.m., North Central will hold its graduation ceremony. The next day we'll see Lewis and Clark seniors graduate, including Ella, who you just heard from, at noon on June 13th. Ferris follows them at 3.30 p.m. that afternoon, and Rogers will round out the Sunday festivities at 7 p.m. on June 13th. Now all of the graduations you just heard about are taking place at the Riverfront Park Pavilion. We'll have more for, for you on what SPS leaders say at the board meeting tonight during our shows at 10 and 11 o'clock. For now, back to you guys. Ian, thank you for that. Happening tonight, Spokane Public Schools will decide on three new middle school names and mascots. They will also decide on a name change for On Track Academy. The new names have been months in the making. There are three name finalists for each school. The board narrowed the final list down to nine from over 1,400 suggestions. Make sure you watch Up With Creme tomorrow morning. Tim Pham will be live at the new school locations with the names picked by SPS. He'll also be talking about the significance of each chosen name. Well, it is a sure sign of summer. Tom's barbecue forecast returning tomorrow here at Krem after a year of not having it. So it combines all of our favorites, summer grilling, good weather and helping in the fight against hunger. Yeah, besides just the grilling that we do out here on the back patio, we also promote the Beef Counts program, which helps buys beef for families that are struggling. It's a great program. We've had some much fun in the years past during barbecue forecast. So here's a look back at some of our favorite forecasts Tom has done. I love the idea of doing street tacos, but looking pretty darn good if you ask me. Oh, there we go. Try it out? Yeah. Cheers. Okay, to you too. Portuguese spicy beef kebabs. Steaks, yeah, we're living large right now. Come on out, we've got some that are already done for you. Thank you God so love you for eating thank beef. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sliders on the grill. We are grilling up uh, uh, beef and chicken kebabs and ribs out here in the backyard. Chicken. Jeff Bollinger doing it, boy, our photographer. He said, Tom, I don't care if you're inside or not, we're grilling these up. Oh, hi, Jeff. <laughs> Look at our Jeff, he's the greatest. Right. Beer bath brats. The brats are cooking in the beer right now. Whoa, and you know, ignore the flames on the barbecue. Let's talk about weather. Uh, and hopefully not hear any sirens here. Oh, it looks so goes. good. It looks I fantastic. <laughs> and Tom, I got to say, man, for people at home, this is our favorite time of the year because you feed everybody in the newsroom. And who doesn't like that? Right? Yeah, and I, I thought I'll never take that for granted again. You know, right. last year because of COVID precautions, you know, we didn't get to even see each other. So right. we weren't allowed to share food or anything. But uh, just today, the mask mandate went away in the building for folks that are fully vaccinated. Right. The six foot rule went away. And now with barbecue forecast tomorrow starting, I get to feed the crew 
again. Everybody that's been vaccinated now, and we're almost all vaccinated uh, right. here, they'll all be able to come out. We'll be able to share the, uh, the food. We'll cook. We're just going to do burgers and dogs tomorrow, but I love it. By the way, I want to let everyone know here that uh, the if you want to know more about the barbecue forecast and the Beef Counts program, just text the keyword barbecue to 509-448-2000. Loving that. Should we do a little weather here, Marcus? Let's do it, and yes. And Regina? Hey, by the way, look at this. It's back. I haven't really pointed this out before, but can you see it right there? Oh, yeah, it's the frog, right? Frog? It's spider dude. <laughs> <laughs> This spider, is spider dude and a frog? I thought it was a frog. Right I lost. Oh. Sp it's a spider. Okay. It's spider, spider dude. Spider dude. Anyway, so we keep him out here. He kind of <laughs> blends in because he's kind of green. But, uh, right. you know, I just want viewers who are longtime viewers and pay attention viewers, just keep an eye out. You'll see him. We move him around. Anyway, just doing that. <laughs> All part of the program, Tom. Absolutely. You learn something free. new. Okay, let's do this. Weather headlines, gang. We're talking about cha changes in the weather for tomorrow. We'll look for showers and thunderstorms to develop, especially north of Spokane by late tomorrow uh, afternoon, more likely into the evening hours. Then Friday will be cool and windy with some pop-up showers in the afternoon. Wind gusts to about 30 miles an hour. I think out in central Washington, most likely you're going to get blowing dust on Thursday and again Friday unless you get some of that rain. Right now we're at 70 degrees. It is, this is Goldilocks weather. It is absolutely perfect down here. Not too hot, not too cold, just about right. Uh, we take a look at the Doppler radar. You can see right here the showers now beginning to move into northwestern Washington. That's what's headed our way tomorrow. So day planner forecast, partly cloudy skies overnight with a low of 49. We'll look for a high of 72 tomorrow again with windy conditions, blowing dust, possible showers and thunderstorms developing by the evening hours, late afternoon into the evening hours. Three day weekend. This looks more like a July 4th weekend forecast than a uh, Memorial Day weekend because we don't have any rain. 72 on Saturday, 78 on Sunday, and man, oh man, 84. That means we're going to get uh, hot and dry. I've got temperatures near 90 that I'm going to show you in the 10 day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. My goodness, talk about a Memorial Day forecast right there. Thank you, Tom. Well, it was a busy morning for Gonzaga basketball news as there were two big time pieces of scheduling news, but the biggest news of all came in the form of a player. Drew Timmy officially announced he is coming back for his junior season and fans are understandably pretty excited. Our Brendan Green joining us now to tell us why Drew is returning and why it's such a big deal. It's kind of a no dust statement to say Drew Timmy returning to Gonzaga is massive. He averaged 19 points per game last season and was a second team All-American. But I want to go beyond the obvious today to discuss the impacts of Timmy returning to this Gonzaga squad. Let's just start with the rotation. Gonzaga will have one of the best, if not the best, front court in the country with Chet Holmgren, Anton Watson, and Timmy. Drew returning means that Chet can play more at the four position and utilize his perimeter shooting game, which is very strong. Drew being back also means that you can experiment with putting Julian Strother in a Corey Kispert-esque situation like last year and play Strother at the four. Drew already has extensive experience with playing with an undersized four, and Julian will be able to lean on him. If Julian can thrive like Corey did in that position while Chet Holmgren gets some rest on the bench, Watch out, folks. Timmy also returns as the most reliable bucket getter on this Gonzaga squad. Actually, let's amend that. He's the most reliable returning bucket getter in the country. Yes, we all know Drew Timmy is good in the post, but he is the nation's top returner in field goal percentage unless the two seniors who finished ahead of him last season decide to return for an extra COVID year. Timmy finished the year shooting 65.5% from the field, which is outstanding. He brings a consistency that no other player on the team brings, and that will be huge as few will try to add in a bunch of new pieces this season. The final and honestly biggest reason, in my opinion, why Drew's return is such a big deal is because this team needs an emotional leader. I honestly can't think of anyone else on this squad who could step into Corey Kispert's leadership role except for Drew. Andrew Nimhard and Anton Watson are simply more understated guys and no one else on the team has enough experience to be taken seriously as a leader. This is now Drew's squad and this is going to be a lot of fun to see. Oh, by the way, we mentioned this off the top, but Drew squad had a bit of scheduling news today. John Rothstein reporting that Gonzaga will play Texas in the kennel next season and that they will play Alabama in Seattle on December 4th. 
That Alabama game will be a preseason top 10 matchup, while the Texas game will be a preseason top 25 matchup. No date is currently set with the contest against the Longhorns. Back to you.